It's an ambitious plan to cut pollution from traffic. Britain set to ban the sale of new petrol and diesel vehicles by 2030, 10 years earlier than originally scheduled. Some hybrids will still be allowed, but there'll be grants for electric cars and funding for charging points. All part of a new 10-point plan aimed at making sure the UK meets its commitment to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is calling it a green industrial revolution. The plan aims to create up to 250,000 highly skilled green jobs by 2030. It includes a pledge to make London the centre of global green finance and involves mobilising $16 billion of government money with the private sector providing up to three times that amount. One highlight is a pledge to quadruple offshore wind power by 2030, producing enough electricity to power every UK home, as well as a big boost in hydrogen production. But the opposition Labour Party says only a third of the programme is new money, pointing out countries such as Germany and France are investing tens of billions of dollars. For this expert, it's a small step in the right direction. Just a few weeks ago, we identified that the government was spending just a tenth of what's needed uh, every year to meet uh, net zero. £33 billion a year is what's needed every year over this parliament. What's been announced today is welcome, but it does fall short from what we think is needed. The plan involves greater investment in new nuclear power plants as part of the non-carbon energy mix. It also includes funds to insulate homes and public buildings, responsible for roughly a third of the UK's carbon emissions, as well as tree planting programmes and new carbon capture initiatives. But there's nothing about something environmental campaigners want to see, a frequent flyer levy. We believe, and this was supported by the UK's Climate Citizens Assembly, that there should be higher taxes for those people who fly more, so that uh, the, first, the first flights are comparatively cheap, but they become steadily more and more expensive because we know actually that just 15% of people in the UK take 70% of the flights. The government's promising to invest in clean public transport and make cycling an easier way to travel, especially in cities. The challenge now is what incentives are needed to make a real difference. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera, London.